Skelmersdale in West Lancashire. A small town surrounding the Tord Valley and home to the wildlife haven of the River Tord. In years gone by, this pretty rock-studded stream was home to populations of wild brown trout. Tragically, a series of toxic spills resulted in the trout being wiped out. While a concrete dam restricts downstream escape and prevents upstream repopulation. With spiralling government debt, the main hope for the Tord fell to local people and non-governmental organisations. Local resident Mike Flatty got through lockdown by finding solace in the wildlife of the Tord. With fellow members of Friends of Tord Valley, post-Covid initiatives include litter picks, invertebrate monitoring and the rest of the Urban River Toolkit. Including using Mayfly in a classroom to inspire local school children by collecting larvae, incubating them in the classroom so the kids see the transformation into mayflies that they then return to the River Tord. All these activities and more were recognised in the Silver Level Trout in the Town Award, a process starting in 2021 with Mike's request for an advisory visit. In that report, Cobbs Clough Weir was identified as a significant problem. What I didn't know was that the Ribble Rivers Trust would include Cobbs Clough as one of the eight weirs being removed in the Our Douglas project. Ribble Rivers Trust's efficiency meant they were on site by 2023, where more typically negotiations for permissions and securing funding would take five to ten years. Before you knew it, the weir was gone and replaced by a rocky riffle. As a totem to the recovery of the Tord, a Paul Curtis mural was commissioned and is a bold reminder of the life that swims in the river. But one year on, I was anxious to find any signs of recovery for the Tord's wild trout. You might think it's strange, but I was drawn to using a traditional silk line to cast a small artificial fly that would float on the surface. Making my first casts on the riffle that replaced the weir, I smiled at what Frederick Halford, the well-to-do father of modern dry fly fishing, would think of all this. His exclusive chalk stream fisheries of the south feel a little different to the Tord. Almost exactly a year earlier, just days after the dam removal, I'd made my first investigation. On that trip, I was able to discover resident dace, which made me smile while also bearing the knowledge that they are relatively resistant to sewage pollution. Yeah. The similarly pollution-tolerant chub were also recorded. But I was unable to catch a trout. The challenging casting was definitely noted. Something to be carried into 2024 ventures with a fly rod. This flat water is making me obsess over stealth while threading casts around the tree branches. Patience pays off, and the welcome capture of a dace means my fly choice is probably acceptable. And anticipation runs high. Even so, it's important to stay patient and stealthy. Try to rush too much and you won't be able to thread the needle when casting. Softly, softly, catchy, trouty. It's 
some great trout habitat here, even if the water is looking worryingly milky from likely construction drainage. After a while longer casting under and over woody habitat, there are few signs of surface feeding. It's time for a radical switch up, in the form of a bait fish pattern, which no doubt would have driven our friend Halford to distraction. Even for me it's slightly incongruous to pair it with a vintage reel and silt line. But in the name of science I'm genuinely excited to see if anything is hiding under that sunken log. Twitch twitch twitch. It's my impression of a helpless bait fish. Letting the fish pass water over their gills while photographing them helps them get their breath back. A minimal handling with well wetted hands helps them keep their protective slime and avoid infection. Bye bye, thank you. Go make some more. <laughs> I'll be back this winter with the friends of Tord Valley to look for trout nests. And if you like this video, you'll probably be interested in the next one on screen now.